Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel. My name is Mike and today we are going on an awesome bucket list trip with me and my two older brothers. Now normally on the channel, what you would see is us working on the YouTube Yacht Project, the Timber Bridge Project, or the pond expansion slash repair that we've got going on in the woods right now. We're maybe doing a little bit of work for Dirt Perfect, but today we're switching it up a little bit. We are headed up to Buffalo, New York to go visit the USS The Sullivans, which is the vessel, the ship that our grandfather served on during World War II. Now we've all been there before, but never together. This is our first brother's trip and I'm gonna say at least five years and we're pretty excited. Pretty big bucket list item for us. So after a little under 10 hours of wrong turns, sarcastic comments, and some good old fashioned storytelling, we have finally made it to Buffalo, New York. John and Tony are getting the tickets secured in there. And this is what we are here to see. This is the USS The Sullivans. This is the vessel that our grandfather served on for almost two years during World War II. It's a Fletcher class destroyer commissioned in 1943. It's named after the five Sullivan brothers who lost their lives serving on the USS Juno in 1942. And we'll talk about that in a little bit more depth later on in the video. This is located in Buffalo, New York at their Naval Park. They have the USS the Sullivans and then alongside it there you can see the Little Rock. And they also have the USS the Croker which we will check all of those vessels out as well. This is my older brother Tony. Tony's been a med tech for 16 years, lived in Vermont for about five years, but is now back home living in Evansville, which is the same city that I work in. There's an 11 year age difference between Tony and I. And I bring that up for a very specific reason, and we'll talk about that later in the video as well. This is John, which is the oldest out of five siblings. John's been a paramedic for nearly 30 years and is one of the main reasons I ended up in the fire service. He's the oldest out of all our siblings, like I said, and I'm the youngest, with a 15 year age difference between the two of us. Radar detection and range. And that age difference is gonna play a big part in the significance of this trip for me personally. Look at all those destroyers. Those are just the destroyers that went down. That's amazing. We are two stand-up machine guns. Okay, so it's the ones on the lower deck. Would be on this side. It'd be these right here. On the port side. It was on this side. Left side. I briefly mentioned the Sullivan brothers earlier on in the video. The five Sullivan brothers aged from 20 to 27, and they served on the light cruiser, the USS Juno, which is what you see here. The Juno was sunk around November 13, 1942, but however, due to some miscommunication, the search and rescue operation didn't happen until eight days after the sinking of the Juno, and only 10 sailors survived that incident. After that incident, the implement of the sole survivor policy was put into place and was designed to protect members of a family from the draft or combat duty if they've already lost family members in the military service. I found this old clip online. This is actually the mother of the Sullivan brothers at the christening of the USS the Sullivans when it was launched. wanted to be. Can you imagine how loud it would be in here? Oh, I can't imagine. I can't imagine the, the feeling when all the guns are going off. So where... This is a lower... He came up to the deck over here.
it's it's boggling when you think of the amount of propellant it would take to fire things of this weight. Okay, you can see down there, I guess, where they put it on. That's pretty cool. The thing on the point of that is to try to keep everything as separate as possible. They got like hit. Probably. Man, that would have sucked. Picking those things up in a hurry. Can you imagine that? And not banging into each other while this thing's doing its thing. So does that mean what we just saw under there, there's another one here that's the same? Has to be right. It's just the, the same gun. Imagine the sheer looks like it. Imagine just the sheer weight of the ammo they carried. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> they, when they when they would pull up with another ship to resupply or to transfer wounded or whatever, they would throw or fire a rope over here, they'd secure it, and everything went back and forth on pulleys. He talked about when they would pick up POWs, because they were a rescue destroyer, they went in after battles and picked up survivors. They would put those guys on a, like some seat-like thing, and they would zip them over to another ship. Oh, cool, yeah. That would be a humbling feeling going between two rocking ships, depending on the guys on both sides to get you over. Here's their Battlestar explanations. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I can't imagine sitting inside of this object with all this steel and it going off. I mean, the concussion had to be deafening. And that was back before the days of OSHA where you wore hearing <laughs> protection and stuff. Not only deafening, but just the concussion on your body itself. Yeah, 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 yeah. I briefly mentioned the age difference between us earlier. The reason that age difference is such a big deal, Grandpa passed away in 2003, which would have made me 16 years old, and at 16, I was way too naive to appreciate the time spent with him, and to this day, one of my biggest regrets is not spending more time with him while he was still around. But with Tony and John being older than me, they didn't take that time for granted. They understood the value of those rare moments when he would share stories of his time overseas. They listened, and they heard what he was saying and understood the weight of it all. One of the greatest things about this trip is sitting in the backseat of the car on our way up to New York and listening to them talk about those times, sharing the stories that he shared with them. What years was he on this? He was on it from the day it was christened which was in 43 until the end of the war. So like these two here, he was obviously not on it. Not on the green. But I, I remember he was on the bombardment of Okinawa. I remember him talking about that. And here's Iwo Jima. That, those were bombardments. The rest of them were naval battles in ocean areas. There you go. I wonder what kind of sound that made. Boom. Well, no, I mean, because that had to be propelled by something burning, some kind of propellant. I wonder how heavy they are, just the just the sheer process of putting it in the tube. 432 pounds. 
Wow. more horsepower than your Kia. Yeah. <laughs> Chelsea would like that. <laughs> Fuck. Make it a pie she can make with that. How many people did he say was on his ship? Three something. And you got to cook for all of them in this kitchen. Yeah. In this kitchen, you're cooking for all those people. Yeah, but as you know, they probably ate the same thing every day. It probably got to be a That's a cool painting. Oh, that's the that. USS Kid. Fancy. Oh, look, it's getting ready to get hit by a. They've already, they've already shot it, but it's getting ready to strike the, the boat. This is one of two boiler rooms on the Sullivans. There is one for each prop. It is a twin prop. There are two propellers on this ship. It's powered by a total of four oil-powered boilers that turned two geared steam turbines that then in turn turned the two screws for combined power of 60,000 horsepower. And it could push this ship up to 36 and a half knots or 42 miles per hour with a range of 5,500 miles at 15 knots. I ended up doing quite a bit of research on the Fletcher class destroyer for this video just to make sure I had my information correct. And one of the most staggering things I saw is they completed 175 Fletcher class destroyers during World War II. 175 of these they were able to produce in a very short amount of time. That absolutely struck me. Not only were they producing these destroyers, but they were producing cruisers, they were producing aircraft carriers and tanks and airplanes. The amount of production that happened during that time period is absolutely mind-boggling. this straight off the engine room and the boiler room is the machine shop keep in mind these guys had to be able to repair almost anything while in route they weren't always close to a port or a harbor where they could get repaired they had to make the repairs themselves straight off the machine shop was the birthing area this is known as the e-division birthing area and this was consisting of the machinist mates the firemen and the electricians the people that worked on that boiler room and those engines slept by the boiler room and the engines. And the whole ship seemed to be divided in that manner. Whatever station you were assigned to, that's where your birthing racks were going to be. This is a twin 20 millimeter anti-aircraft cannon capable of firing rounds anywhere from 250 to 320 rounds per minute 
from a 60 round magazine. It's the drums you see sitting on top of the weapon. The Sullivan had seven of these, and of those seven, this one was the responsibility of our grandfather. This gun was our grandfather's station while he was on the Sullivans. Now we talked to some members on board, and there's no way of knowing if this is the exact weapon that was here when it was in service. The Sullivans has had a couple retrofits since World War II, one of which was updating the weaponry for the Korean War, and then when they made it to the museum, they brought everything back to World War II era weaponry. So we don't know if this is the exact gun. But we know for a fact he was on this style weapon on the port side of the vessel, which is where we are at now. And the thought that we are holding the same weapon that our grandfather manned for two years as he fought for his country, for our country, it was too powerful for us to believe anything other than that this is definitely the gun. And it's only now, as I edit this video, doing the voiceovers, doing the research, that I realize how much I have taken for granted the years of my later teens and early 20s. Only now realizing the view that our grandfather had during that same age. After visiting the Sullivans, we hopped over to the USS Little Rock. The Little Rock was commissioned in 1945, but completed too late to see any action in World War II. She was built as a light cruiser, but later configured into a missile cruiser, which is how she sits now. You're looking at Mark 7 Tallow missiles. They're 32-foot-long radar-guided missiles and are very impressive to see in person. The Little Rock not only had exhibits inside of herself, but several old naval history exhibits as well, and it was very, very cool. But one of the things that I was really impressed by, aside from the massive missiles, of course, is this. This is a Mark 16 triple six-inch gun. Could fire 130-pound projectile 13 miles and capable of eight rounds a minute from this gun. But what really blew our minds is it took three officers and 52 men to operate this weapon. There would be several men between each one of these barrels inside this turret to have this thing in full operation. The plate on the front, six and a half inch thick steel. Those guns would recoil 21 inches when fired. Even standing in it, walking around it, and walking away from it like we are now, it was absolutely almost impossible to fathom the massive size of this weapon. So we're gonna head down to the submarine next. These were warships and these were uh, merchant ships that supported. It says down there that they sank more merchant ships than they sank warships. So merchant warships. Yes. Okay. The USS Croker was launched in December of 1943. She had six officers and 54 enlisted men on board. She could do 21 knots at the surface and nine knots submerged, capable of staying submerged for up to 48 hours. You'll see as we go through the walkthrough, she has V16 engines that charge two 126 cell batteries. And we'll go over that a little bit more as we go through this walkthrough. After we get done going through the croaker, we're going to check out the world's oldest active fireboat and probably one of the coolest things that we didn't even know existed in Buffalo, New York. That's not, not for people are my eyes. I mean, just the sheer weight of the one torpedo. I wonder how many you carry. Look at this. This is the shower. I gotta figure out how to get through this thing. The officer shower. May I'll do that in YouTube, yeah. Officer shower, John. That's a luxurious one. Here's a stateroom. How many men were on this? Did they say? 
80? Was it 80? I don't, I don't remember. I thought it was 80 or 100. I don't know. Officer's stateroom. Captain's quarters. Wow. Chief Petty Officers. So here, we're on the port side. This would control the diving. Those lovers, all you do is... For the planes. Is this up in the conning tower then? Probably. Right? Yeah, because that's periscope, isn't it? Yeah. Somewhere here. That's crazy. cylinders. It's massive. Are these for the batteries? Yeah, did you hear him earlier? There's 252 batteries on this thing. 126 on each end. <laughs> this is the generator, right? Has to be. Yeah, look at all the amp meters. But what? Port reverser. Electric? Generator, generator. One, generator three. Right there. So we just got done eating lunch over there. There's the Sullivans and a the little rock. Then we came across the bridge. Now we're checking out this thing. So this is something we stumbled across. We are actually going from the Buffalo Naval Park over to the fireboat that we wanted to check out. We happened to see this, we walked inside, we walked upstairs, and this is what we saw. They're building by hand, the men and women you see, and they're volunteers, by the way, that is worth mentioning. They are building by hand from locally harvested hardwoods, a traditional full-size reproduction of the inaugural Erie Canal boat from 1825. Buffalo, New York was the terminus of the Erie Canal whenever it was constructed. Whenever they're done with this, and they hope to be done in September of 2023, they plan on doing tours of the Erie Canal on this reproduction boat. You can actually sign up to volunteer if you're in the area, which I thought was pretty cool. And they do have an Instagram and Facebook social media, so you can follow the progress. I'll try to remember to put those links in the description if you want to check it out.
This is the Edward M. Cotter, considered the world's oldest active fire boat. She was built in 1900. She was named Edward M. Cotter in the 1950s after a leader of the union of the Buffalo City Fire Department passed away. She has five fire monitors, two forward, three aft. One of the aft monitors can be raised 15 feet in the air on a hydraulic cylinder. Originally a single screw boat, she was retrofitted and repowered in 1953 to a twin screw design. Her main purpose for the department now is to serve as an icebreaker. She's powered by four Caterpillar D397 V12 engines capable of 11 knots. The captain said she wasn't built for speed, she was built for muscle to be able to push through that ice in the wintertime. She has a pumping capacity of 15,000 gallons per minute. Now this isn't an advertised tourist attraction, but myself being a career fireman, my brother being a medic, and my other being a med tech, we have an interest in the fire service and we knew this was in the area. We stopped by, we rang the bell, and Captain John was more than accommodating. He gave us a very in-depth tour and I really didn't get a lot of video on it because I was trying to focus on what he was saying about the boat. You could just tell they had an immense sense of pride of being in charge of such a historic vessel. There's the USS Little Rock. Check this out, they got a little sailing school going on right here. A bunch of kids out here sailing, that's pretty cool. Anyway, we are going out on the Miss Buffalo 2 for a harbor tour and river tour. Looks like we go up the river a little ways, which I think the Cotter was up in here somewhere, so we might see the Cotter again. And we go up the Niagara River a little ways, hopefully not too far. So this is the Peace Bridge. This is the international bridge between Canada and the United States, connecting Buffalo, New York and Fort Erie, Ontario. 5,800 feet long and opened in 1927. Now the waterway we're on now is a section of the canal, but the waterway you see with the current out away from us on the other side of that concrete barrier, that's actually the Niagara River. That submarine looking crashed barge looking thing out in the river to the right of your screen, that's actually the second water intake for the city of Buffalo that they made and it's the current contingency plan if what we are going out to now ever fails, which is the primary water intake. I thought this was really cool. This was started in 1907 and finished in 1913. It sits approximately 6,000 feet off of shore from the city of Buffalo. They had to go down 60 feet into the bedrock below the lake and then make a tunnel 12 foot by 12 foot wide. And that intake is capable of moving 125 million gallons of water a day. That was pretty impressive to me. One final random stop we decided to make while we were in town was Buffalo City Hall. It's a 28 story building built in 1932 and the main reason we wanted to check it out was the observation deck on the 20th floor. You take the elevator to floor 25 and then a few sets of stairs up to 28 and you get an incredible view of the city of Buffalo and Lake Erie. 
Admission was actually free, and there are several other locations within the City Hall that you could check out that are historically significant, but because of COVID, of course, everything was kind of limited right now. We are just thankful that they actually had the observation deck open and available for us to check out. Mango, ladies, how are you? The chicken is mad. Why is the chicken mad? Oh, there it is. It's okay. Charlotte's got her. Where'd the baby go? I don't know. The baby. I hear it. I hear it. That's the mama, Charlotte. She can be mad. One of our hens hatched a little chick this time while we were gone. You can see it there. Yeah, so we got back about an hour ago, got everything unpacked. Now we're outside hanging out with the girls. They show me the new baby chick we have, which is exciting. She's sitting on several other eggs, so we'll have a few more chicks coming in soon as well. They're back, I can only assume, sledding on the rock pile because what else do you do in Southern Indiana for a good time? Anyway, the trip was amazing. It was incredible. We were up there for three nights and we had a great time. <laughs> anyway, we had a great time. It was a fantastic trip and we're starting to plan our next brother's trip. So we're pretty excited about that. I don't know if I talked about it in the voiceover or not, but I went up there with some questions, looking to answer some questions about my grandfather and things that I didn't know about him. And I left with even more questions. I mean, I got some answers, but I left with even more questions and it's leading me down this real exciting thing where I'm just starting to learn. <laughs> I'm starting to learn about the history of our family and the history of my grandparents. It's something that I've never really done before and it's definitely exciting. It's something I hope to include them on too as we kind of learn about it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you're enjoying the channel. Tomorrow we're going camping. I'm going camping with Chelsea up at Marengo National Park and then we are starting to haul equipment up here Sunday evening to work on the pond repair. So we'll have some good pond repair videos coming up soon. And I don't know if I mentioned this or not, we're gonna take each month, I can go to my YouTube statistics and I can see how much money we earned off of this video, off of YouTube revenue. We're gonna take that each month and we're gonna send it up as a donation to the Buffalo Naval Park. There are a lot of volunteers that work there and maintain those ships. It takes a tremendous amount of funding to keep that museum in an operating condition to keep those ships afloat. I don't know if you noticed during the video, but the USS Croker is listing quite a bit. It's got a pretty heavy leak and they had pumps actively running while we were there. It takes a lot of money to maintain that and every little bit helps. So we're gonna take the money from this video and contribute to that and hopefully, you know, do a little part that we can from this YouTube channel. That way, hopefully we can take the girls up there one day to show them. Here comes the doggo. The girls are gonna keep sledding. Cora, what are you doing? She's a turtle. Cora's doing her best turtle impression. I don't know, I'm so distracted with everything that's going on. I'm happy to be home. I'm happy we had the trip. I'm happy you guys are watching the channel as always. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. <laughs> what are we gonna do now? Monopoly. Monopoly? Monopoly. All right.